Hi, and welcome to part three of this PowerShell Selenium tutorial series. In the last video, we found out how to kind of navigate, parse through web pages, looking at the developer tools in Google Chrome, finding out how to copy the XPath and just clicking different items, filling in different forms. And like I said, the last video would cover something a little bit more fun, which is uh, automating uh, the cookie clicker game. Uh, so this is going to be the script that we're going to write, um, and I'm going to show you that how we got to this point. Uh, but I'm also just going to show you guys what it does. So if we actually just launch this up here, it will launch Google Chrome, and it will actually start clicking on the cookie, and it will actually automatically uh, purchase the grandma upgrades as well as they get unlocked. Uh, and you can always change the code. Uh, to uh, not get the grandma up upgrades, but get the cursor upgrades instead, or get the future upgrades. Um, it is all fully customizable. I will show you guys how to set this up. So let's go ahead and let's get started here. So first, what we're gonna wanna do is we are gonna wanna open up a new PowerShell uh, script. Uh, and like always, uh, what we've done in the last few videos here, is just initialize our Selenium script here. Uh, so let me just save this here. So once again, I have a, a folder um, in my tutorial series, Cookie Clicker, and I have the web driver and the Selenium driver in there. So that will be good. Uh, so what I always like to do first is I always like to start this off, get this at least going. And then what we're going to do is we are going to navigate to the cookie clicker game. Uh, so what we're going to do is chrome.navigate, open and close brackets, go to URL, open and close brackets. And in there, we are going to pass the string. And the string for us here is actually, I'm just going to grab it from here. And then the rest, we are going to do it blind. So let's go ahead and let's take a look here. So now let's navigate to this. So now we should be on the page. So this is just a normal web page. Uh, there are clickable buttons. So and if we click on the cookie, we can see that it does work. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna right click on the cookie first and click on inspect and click on inspect again. So this is our, let me just zoom in here for you guys. And there you are. So this is the cookie itself. So let me just bring this a little bit closer. You guys can see it. So it does highlight the cookie and the ID is big cookie. So that is going to be what we want to click on. So let's go ahead and let's go back to our script here and let's do cookie equals chrome dot find element by ID since it has an ID. And it's, it's a little bit easier to find that way. And we are going to go ahead and we're going to do big cookie. And if we do this here and we run cookie, we should see that it is a div and we do find it. So that is perfect. So just to make sure that our cookie is actually well selected, what we are going to do is we're going to create a while true loop. So this is an infinite loop. So you will have to stop the script in order uh, to stop it from going. Uh, we aren't putting any conditions on here since we just wanted it to click in infinitely. So we're going to do cookie dot click and let's run this here. And there it is. So it is already going. We are cooking on this cookie um, way faster than I ever can. So that is awesome. So now we see that there are uh, these upgrades that are available for purchasing. But right now with our script, because our script is running, I can't click nearly as fast 
to even buy these upgrades. So as we can see, like I'm not getting any of these upgrades. So we need to figure out a way in our script to actually automatically buy these as they become available um, or any other real logic that you want. I'm going to show you how to buy them as they become available. Uh, but you can definitely implement your own logic into this to buy them at certain times. Uh, you can look at how many cookies you have and decide, like, I only want to buy once I reach 10,000 cookies, and then I want to buy stuff. Uh, you can set that to 50,000 if you wanted. It's really up to you on how you want to code the logic of your bot. I'm just going to be making something super, super simple so we can just see how it works. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to stop this script here. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to inspect one of these here. We're going to inspect and then inspect again. And we're just going to zoom in here. So we can actually see that there's a bunch of these product unlocked enabled, and then there's product locked disabled. Now, the disabled ones, as you can guess, are the ones with question marks. So those are locked and disabled. The ones that are enabled uh, and unlocked have a price and it's green, but also if I actually buy some of these, now we actually see that it has actually unlocked but it's actually still disabled because we can't afford it yet so we know that the ones we can afford and we can available for purchase are going to be product unlock enabled class and we can see that they're all in this div called products here so what we want to do is we want to get all the products and then we want to get all the ones that are enabled because really we don't really care if they're unlocked or product because we know if they're enabled, they're unlocked and they're a product. So that's usually um, my logic behind this. So let's go ahead and let's see how we can get that to work here. So if we go back here, we know that the list of products is actually just ID products. So let's go ahead and let's grab that here. So let's do products equals Chrome find element by ID. And we are going to do products here. All right. And then if we run this, we will actually see that we do get our product here. And we can actually see like buy, sell. It has all the text that's in there. Uh, including the question marks, but we don't really need to worry about that right now. What we will actually want to do is we're actually going to be doing a nested find. So we haven't seen this in the previous video. And actually, let me just zoom out here so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Um, but we're going to be doing a nested. So what we have here is this products, which is actually this top level here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking inside of it. So what we could do is if we do products dot uh, I believe there's a way to find this, uh, but there might not be. And doesn't seem like there is, but that's all right. What we will do is we're going to do products and then we are going to do find by CSS selector. And then what we're going to do in this CSS selector is we are going to look for dot enabled. So if we do that here and then we look inside here, we can actually see cursor, but we only see one. And that's actually because I did find element by CSS selector. So let's actually do find elements by CSS selector. And there we have it. So we have farm and the price of farm. We have grandma and we have cursor. So this is exactly what we wanted. We only have the ones that are available for purchase right now, which is awesome. So what we can do here is we can do we can assign this to 
available products. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit for you guys. All right. So now that we have our available products, what we can do is we can do if available products. And then we could do available products. Now, this is where we kind of have a choice. So if I do it this way, if available products, and then I just do available products, uh, and then available products dot count minus one. And what that will do, it will always select the last one out of the array here. And we do a dot click. What will happen is it will always select the cursor. Um, so it will always select the cursor, and that's just how it will work. Now, if I change this to dot count greater than one, and then we stop this. And we execute this now. Now we will see it will always purchase the grandma. So this is like the simplest way of setting up the way to purchase. Now, of course, you can add multiple if statements in here, some different while loops to constantly check. You can grab, again, like I said, like the cookies per second, maybe, um, or the cookies to really decide what you want to purchase. Um, and kind of go that route. Um, this is a very, very basic uh, selection. You can even do like a random, like every time that the cookies clicked, we look for a number between zero and um, like zero and 10. If it's an even number, then we buy something. If it's an odd number, we just skip and we click again instead. Um, so those are all the different ways that you can do it. It really depends on your strategy of the game. But this is uh, this video is really to show the nested selection and just that you guys can actually automate things that you know might not really look like a typical web page um, and that is actually a game and that you can actually do a lot more than just click on the cookie, but actually even implement a logic to buy the upgrades as well. So that was it for the PowerShell Selenium series. If you guys do want more videos on PowerShell and Selenium, uh, maybe some different type of automation, if you guys want me to automate certain websites or something, just let me know. Uh, post it in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you on the next video.